this, it's the front lawn of the city, the front porch of the city. Reimagining Baltimore's Harbor Place, the once vibrant shopping center it used to be a symbol of the city's downtown renaissance. Over the years, that reality, though, has changed. To see the state that it's in now, I think everyone's uh, pretty depressed about that. This morning, we talked to the West Baltimore developer who is on a mission to revive the destination and usher in its next chapter. Hello everyone, I'm Jason Newton and welcome to 11 TV Hill. When Harbor Place opened back in 1980, it was considered state of the art, both as a tourist destination and as an economic driver for Baltimore. It pioneered what became known as the Festival Marketplace, a trendy idea at the time. The light and Pratt Street pavilions bustled with activity from shoppers, diners and crowded stores. Well, fast forward to 2019, a judge placed that market under court ordered receivership after owner Ashkenazi Acquisitions Corporation defaulted on its multi-million dollar loan. One year later, the auditorium, uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not, shut its doors, a casualty of the COVID-19 pandemic. In 2021, Swedish retailer H&M and chain restaurant Bubba Gump Shrimp ended their runs at the site, leaving Hooters as one of the only businesses still in operation at the Light Street Pavilion. Well, one chapter closes, another opens. Baltimore-based developer MCB Real Estate is in agreement now to buy the downtown property pending court approval. David Bramble, the developer's managing partner, wants to reinvent the space as a gathering hotspot, something more to current taste, both for city residents and out-of-town visitors. And I spoke with him about his vision for the harbor's centerpiece. And join us now is Baltimore businessman David Bramble. Thanks for coming by, man. Your, you. your name's been everywhere. We've been talking about Harbor Place. And I think the most important thing to think about are the memories. For me, it was family and friends. It was it was appointment place to go for dinner. And now Baltimore doesn't have the recognition downtown. You want to change it. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody has fond memories of yeah. the harbor. It was the place that you took any friend that came into town. It was a place we went for weekends with family visits. And uh to see the state that it's in now, I think everyone's uh, pretty depressed about that. You must be an optimist. I mean, because I think you see an opportunity there. And I'm curious of what, what you see. 100%. I mean, I think to be a real estate investor and a developer, you have to be an optimist. Yeah. Um, but we're also realists, yeah. um, which means you have to take what's there and you've got to figure out how to create something practical um, that sort of combines with what the community wants to use mm -hmm. and also what's financially feasible. Um, as I've said many times, you know, you know, we're investors, so we have to get a return for our investment, but we also have to deliver something transformative and amazing for Baltimore City. You said important for you is to make sure that this wasn't just your team with a vision. That's right. Tell me, how do you move forward with this project to ensure that uh, not only the person who's in the county is going to take the light rail down, but the person who lives five blocks away can enjoy Harbor Place again? That's a really good question, and, and we, we've been uh, very focused on this at MCB. Um, we've been focused on making sure that we design um, a incredible community engagement process. Mm -hmm. So instead of starting just with our vision and plans, we're going to start with engaging folks. Um, uh, this, this asset is incredibly important, not just for downtown Baltimore. In fact, it's important for the entire city. It's, yeah. we're, it's, this, it's the front lawn of the city, the front porch of the city, however you want to describe it. Um, and how it goes and how it impacts both the central business district as well as all of the neighborhoods of the city and access to it is quite frankly critical to the economic and uh, future of the entire city. Every neighborhood, um, every area uh, will do better if uh, this area is doing better. I know it's early, but I mean, when you look at things you've done at Northwood, you did another one on Eastern Avenue, the, I think the age of the mall might be gone. So do you have to factor that into how you, is it going to be retail or could it be green space? All this is one of those, I mean, yeah, anything no, goes at this point. <laughs> I think it's a really good question. And, and the answer is, uh, you know, when Harbor Place first came out, it was a different time in America. Yeah. Um, so we are absolutely going to look at what was done. Yeah. But I think we're looking to the future. Um, we're looking to what do people want to see? What's going to attract people to spend time here? Um, and we're thinking at this point, we're thinking very local. Um, we're thinking about what makes it unique, and we think if it's unique and attractive to folks who live in Baltimore, yeah. then it's going to be unique and attractive for people who are coming to visit. Yeah. So we're really starting local, and then we'll expand from there. Is part of this project personal memories for you? Is it, is it what brought you back to the project? 
I mean, yes. I mean, I don't think I don't think anybody who grew up in Baltimore when we grew up in Baltimore that this wasn't a really important part of our childhoods. Yeah. Um, but what's amazing is, <clears throat> although the buildings have fallen to disrepair, people still love the water. If you go down there on the weekends, you'll still see people, you know, trying to connect with the water and using the space. <clears throat> I think our real opportunity is to bring back something that takes that access to the water to the next level. Yeah. How do we turn this into a place where people want to be, where businesses want to be, um, <clears throat> that's going to drive economic development for the city? Um, and then that starts with safety and security. It starts yeah. with, um, <clears throat> you know, coming up with the right plan that's, that's inclusive and makes everybody feel welcome mm -hmm. and comfortable and safe. Um, and some place that's you know going to drive economic activity. Do you get nervous about this project? I mean, if, because of all the things you just said, that you want to leave the stamp that Baltimore remembers it by. Yeah, I mean, I you know listen, <clears throat> you know MCB. We have a very long track record yeah. of doing complex real estate deals, so we know how to do the real <laughs> estate part. Um, this is more challenging because um, of how important it is yeah. to the city and, quite frankly, to the state of Maryland. Um, so. This has a level of, of execution requirement that, that goes well beyond any of the projects that we've, we've, uh, we've done in Maryland, um, and we're really excited to get engaged on it. I mean, sure. you mentioned Northwood yeah. Commons, for example. That was a project that took years of community engagement, lots of collaboration, um, and this will be the same thing. Uh, one of the things that we, you know, we know people are excited, but we want to make sure we're temper expectations because it takes a while to do this right. In other words, we're gonna we're not gonna just rush in and do something. We are going to spend the time talking to folks, you know, building the right coalition, mm -hmm. coalitions, getting people involved so that they feel so that everyone feels that this is theirs because that's the bottom line. I can build anything. Yeah. You give me money, I'll build anything. <laughs> the question is um, when we build it, when we're done with it, will people use it? Will they feel like it's theirs? Will it be authentically Baltimore? That's our standard. People are excited, man. man. They're ready to see it. <laughs> David Bramble, good to see you, man. Thank you. Thanks for coming back. And still ahead on 11 TV Hill, making this idea a reality. Mayor Brandon Scott joins us next with his thoughts on the proposal and what he wants to see accomplished. Plus, women owned social enterprise. I'm Tommy Clark in Baltimore. Coming up, the new concept about to launch aimed at equity in business. Joining us now is Mayor Brandon Scott. Thank you for the time, sir. Thank you for having me, as always, Jason. Listen, we just... Joining us now is Mayor Brandon Scott. Thank you for the time, sir. Thank you for having me, as always, Jason. Listen, we just had David Bramble in, and the dude is excited, and I get it. You know, he's a Baltimore born and bred. He's been through uh, everything that's happened at the Inner Harbor as it's grown up, and now he sees it where it is now. I I'm wondering how impressed you are, at least with the start, the momentum here. Yeah, listen, uh, we know how important Harbor Place has been to the city, and this opportunity uh, provides a meaningful uh, generational opportunity to transform uh, Harbor Place in Baltimore. This is not hyperbole, but given how important Harbor Place has been to the city. And working with David uh, as he uh, works to get the full approval to the site, someone that understands Baltimore, that understands the need uh, for Harbor Place 2.0, that ag agrees and, and also wants to see this done in an equitable way with the foundational or focus on making uh, this work and the numbers work for all of Baltimore. Uh, he has my full support. The team has my full support and my deputy mayor for economic development and his team will begin working with him continuously to start planning and coordination. So once he receives the judges award, we can hit their ground running. We've also had early discussions with Waterfront Partnership around uh, interim improvements and programming to begin to activate this asset and create that momentum 
as David builds out his long-term vision. Yeah, I went, you know, I'll ride my bike down there occasionally and I'll stop in as a stopping point as I'm making my way around. I felt disappointment, uh, I think, two weekends ago when I went in because I was the only soul in one of the buildings. I mean, I was it. Uh, and what I remember as a kid is being shoulder to shoulder and the dudes in the fudgery singing and, you know, people yeah. out of town, you know, enjoying themselves. Yeah. And I'm wondering, did you, do you feel that way when you see it now? Um, and, and I wonder what, you know, what was your life experience like when it came to Harbor Place? Yeah, I had the same same experience, right? Going there, going down there to uh, the fudgery, hearing people sing, just being down there for events like fireworks and other things that were happening, right? And knowing that this was a place that we can be proud of as an entire city, that people from all over the country wanted to come. Of course, over the last, uh, really over the last decade or so, we've started to see that decline uh, and we now know. But for me, when I look at it now, Jason, I don't have the disappointment because I know what's about to come and have been involved in this in this work for quite some time since I assumed this role to get it into the better hands. And now we're hopeful that we're going to get it into what I think are the best hands that are ready to deal with this project. So I see the opportunity for a Harbor Place 2.0, where we're not talking about outdated buildings and outdated layout and footprint, but that we're activating each and every section of that space in a way that's gonna uh, uh, bring folks back into Harbor Place, a new generation, so that children like yours will now have the same experiences that we had, but even better and more. I know that some of the importance of this is economic uh, in bringing cash, because you know, as the city goes, the state goes as well. There's some folks that are hoping that that momentum goes into neighborhoods. Uh, so is this considered like the anchor point? Are you, are you hopeful that if this goes well, uh, the folks that live on the other side of Little Italy, a little further past Charles Village or going the other way, um, reap some kind of reward from this? Well, we know that's what, and we know that's what Harbor Place was, right? It's about, and not just for those that are, are in those adjacent neighborhoods, because if you think about it, adjacent, the adjacent neighborhoods are actually doing a lot better than Harbor Place. When you look at Harbor East and you look at Fed Hill and you look at the things that are happening, a Harbor Place that the, the quintessential Harbor Place and Harbor, the downtown business district is what we need to invest in to make sure that that sees a second light. And that's also about investing in people who live throughout the city because we want to create those jobs and opportunities for people who live in other neighborhoods in a city like yours, like mine, for business owners to have places in Harbor Place, for women owned businesses to be there, for black and brown owned businesses to be there, not to be chain focused. And that's how it'll have the impact on the entire city of Baltimore. And when you add what's going to happen at Harbor Place to what we now know is going to happen with our sports complex at Camden Yards, now that they're, they're gonna be renovated, you're talking about creating opportunity that will help us have a stronger Baltimore throughout the city. I, I wanna end on something that you were talking about yesterday in your crime plan, because you are, you are, um, you are dedicated to the holistic idea and uh, including hospitals and uh, safe streets and everyone plays a role. Uh, and of course, there's some people who are frustrated and impatient who don't wanna to, to wait for that, I guess. Tell me how the relationship has to build between police and the city and government entities and the neighborhoods as well, so this holistic plan can work. Yeah, Jason, it's not an either or. I think that what folks get caught up in is headlines or, or taglines from other media stations, not yours, and they don't under, understand that we're not saying that we have to wait now and or wait now and only get things in the future. It's a both and approach, right? As you and I know, our homicide detectives are clearing more cases than they have in a very long time. We're making more gun arrests than we've had. We're doing all of that great work consistently each and every day. However, we're also laying the groundwork and building the relationships in the community for us to see a sustained reduction in violence. And what we announced yesterday uh, with our hospital partners, with representation from the White House who, were, who said that Baltimore is serving as a model to how to build community violence intervention work for the rest of the country. This is a both and approach because when you're talking about uh, all the folks who are injured, and gun violence in their family. We know they're gonna be at the hospital. 
So we behoove us to make sure that we're working with our hospital partners, many who already have what we call hospital-based responder programs, to expand that to hospitals across the city, to coordinate that, to have that be a, a, a official program of the city so that we're preventing other acts of violence from happening. They're getting them the resources that they need, that we're expanding that community violence intervention work that we know mainly in Baltimore through Safe Streets to other community grassroots organizations, right? Like We Are Us and others, so that we're having that impact on both sides of the spectrum. But for the first time, Jason, we are actually also going to invest in victim services, something that we have not done. We know, uh, Dr. Andre Bunley would tell you and I that hurt people hurt people. But if we're actually working with those victims and their families, getting them the things that they need, making sure that we can provide whatever service, whether that be trauma counseling, whether that be health service, substance abuse, whether that be job training opportunities, doing that, uh, investing that money, we're putting $10 million into that community violence intervention ecosystem at the same time that we're growing our group violence reduction strategy, where we have law enforcement and community partners focused in on the most likely to be the victim and perpetrator of violence. That's how we build public safety in Baltimore from all around. Easy enough. Mr. Mayor, always good to see you. Thank you for your time this morning. Yes, sir. Thank you. Take care.